Swifties, Red Danger Fox here. I'm sorry for not posting. Um, I have gotten a lot of comments to do this what if, and I have to say, I actually kind of messed this what if a bit. But I know that you guys really like this one, and I did get a lot of comments asking me if I would do another part or once the other part could come out. So here's your part two of what if Deku was the ghost of punishment. So where I left off is where the school was going to pay for UA, but the thing that the news reporters did leave out is the fact that Midoriya had a second note in his pocket for his family. And Hisashi, well Inko called the Hisashi over telling him everything that Izuku did. Well, Izuku jumped off of a building. Which is very touchy, and I'm sorry if you guys can't hear me. It's literally 4.26 in the morning. So I have to be quiet. <laughs> so basically, Hazashi does fly over, and they read the note that the police officers did get from Midoriya's dead, cor dead, dead corpse. Sorry for not talking. I took a break off of YouTube. Eh. Basically, the letter said, I'm sorry, mom and dad. For not being strong enough, as I said in my previous letter. Oh shoot. And here's what really went down. And Deku explains in immense detail on how the school system, all the teachers, not even All Might, did nothing to help him. Instead, bully him and All Might even told him not to be his, his successor anymore. But Deku was too scared to give up the quirk. And how the school bully... The, his old school bully, Bakugo Katsuki, did, and how everything in his life crumbled down. The only thing that was kind of holding him together is the relationship with his mom, who still who was in his life. But once everyone bullied him even harsher, even using their quirks once, and he ended up being in the hospital because of it. That's when he snapped and took his life. And so, he says, I know that I may not be here, but I want you to know that I will always be in your heart, even if I'm not there with you in real life. Just please don't forget me. As Deku is literally watching over them in the afterlife, since Deku did take his life, but he was a good person, he's in purgatory, and the punishment is he has to punish people for what they did. Anything bad, ta-da, punishment. So basically, the bullies, punishment. Uh, overhaul, punishment. League of Villains, punishment. His old bullies, punishment. And like I said the previous episode, that Deku doesn't kill his victims, he tortures them. And when he tortures them, he tortures them with visions and a lot of terrible things. And so, Inko did show this to Mitsuki, and Mitsuki is like, in shock, because she didn't know Katsuki did this. And Katsuki did get like, several times... Because he was the reason, one of the reasons that Izuku took his life. And for where I live, uh, if you make someone take their life, you have to basically go to juvie. And do community service. So basically, almost all the entire school did that. So, bada bing, bada boom. They have to do community service for a long time because they cost someone their life. And whenever the school or the heroes that were in the school or the students tried to go to Izuku's funeral, they were yelled at by Inko and Hazashi because they were the reason his their son took their life. And Izuku was a good boy. As Araka tries to bring up bad points that Bakugo said as Izuku as Inko like, walked up to her and slapped her across the face. And literally the parents are there as well because the children did have to own up for what they did. And did told their parents as Inko did slap Uraraka in the face. Uraraka's parents did not yell at Inko or anything. They said, that is your punishment. 
Uraka, now you understand the pain of a mother. And Uraka's parents are literally saying, We are disappointed in you, Uraka. I did not know you had this cold heart. Uraka felt ashamed of her actions, and Ida's family dis like disowned him. Taroki literally was scalded by his family and by Rain, his mom. Endeavor was furious at Todoroki because he was going to be a next number one hero, but he didn't know Todoroki could be so heartless, which is kind of Endeavor's fault. Bakugo got it the worst, being yelled at by Inko and his parents, and Hasashi, and getting slapped across the face and the head, which he deserves. So Izuku's literally watching over him in the after over everyone in the afterlife but since he's the god of punishment he's around with chains knives and the thing is he's carrying a kind of a scythe but it's a two scythe two-way scythe so i have been rambling on so basically the parents were allowed to be in the funeral but not any of the heroes not the principal not any of the staff members or the students and a lot of the families like discipline their children in very harsh ways by disowning them or literally telling them to apologize to Izuku's now dead corpse and apologize to the family. And whenever Principal Nezu tried to talk to Inko and Hazashi, Hazashi yells at Principal Nezu and tells him to get away from him and his wife and continues yelling at them and nonstop. Even All Might was disappointed at himself. And whenever Inko and Hisashi looked at him, Inko said, He looked up to you. Hope you're proud of yourself. You. I can't think of a curse word. Hmm. As Inko and Hisashi leave the funeral after everyone did leave, like the families did not want to talk to their children or in this case, in some families, that children, that child, and literally was so disappointed in them. And almost the entire school came. Some of the families took it a bit too far and put them into a camp for trying to get themselves back together. Or literally removed them from UA completely and forced them to go into another station. As a lot of the children think it was unfair, but the parents bring up the fact that they were the reason why someone took their life. Which is a good reason. If you do that, then you are basically putting yourself in your own grave. As Deku is literally whoever is still in UA. UA doesn't have the best school application anymore. It was going into the other school since the rumors have spread because of Midoriya's death. So basically, um, everyone came back, all, almost all the classmen they made it back, some of the students did leave, and almost a lot of the classes and schools, like other schools of hero agencies, do not want to take the students in because of the bad record that they have with one student. And so, a lot of the students either have to go into UA again, or, bada bing, bada boom, going to another regiment, or in this case, going to another location. And a lot of the parents are like disappointed in them, so Deku does like possess UA completely, basically the entire school, like putting visions of him. And students have like reported this to the principal and other staff members, seeing Izuku giggling at the end of a hallway with broken lights giggling like an evil terrifying child and one student when they were going to pick up some stuff to clean the uh let's say as punishment they have to go clean school the ua school one of the students aka yayirozu literally uh had to go get some supplies and she heard footsteps and then the door slammed as she tried to bang on the door as the smoke filled the room. As Deku said, 
as Deku is giggling nonstop, giggling, as Yairos is banging and banging against the door, trying to break it open, as she's trying to use her quirk, and it's not working. She is using, trying to use her quirk, and it's not working. Deku is literally making her quirk stop for she could feel in this much pain. And now Yairozu has a fear of tight spaces. As Deku lights Yairozu out as she screams and wheezes out from this purple smoke. As Deku literally goes into another person. Going into the room where other Class 1A members are. Controlling the mop that um, Kirishima was holding and uses it to hit uh, Juro and Mina. As the, they yell at Kirishima to knock it off. As Kirishima said that's not him. As Kirishima lets go of the mop and the mop falls on the floor. As they yell at him that it was rude because he hit them as the mop then hits the girls causing them to fall over and then hits Kirishima in the gut as they are like trying to go out as the doors shut by themselves as the lights go out as another purple smoke and giggling just continues and continues as the girls and Kirishima are screaming and trying to hit the doors open, Kirishima's trying to use his quirk and it's not working. Neither is uh, Juro's and Mo I mean, Mina. Let's go into Katsuki's view. He's stuck at home because he was cause. He was mainly the reason. I'm not gonna say why anymore because it was gonna be way too annoying for me to reevaluate that someone is, um, you know. Basically, Katsuki's doors start and windows start opening and closing. And the thing is, Mitsuki did lock him in his room for as a punishment. As she did say, this, this is your punishment. As the door and windows shut, as the lights flicker, and everything from Katsuki's drawers and closet art starts moving around. As Katsuki's literally trying to figure things out, and he tries to use his cork, which is not working. As he's trying to open anything and it's not working. He's trying to hit anything. As Mitsuki tells him to pipe down. His dad is literally so disappointed at Katsuki that he doesn't want to talk to him. Katsuki's dad doesn't want to look at his son or talk to him. That's how upset Katsuki's dad is at. As Katsuki continues trying to open the door. As the smoke starts Falling into the room, literally looking like water trying to drown someone, as the image of Izuku floats in, yelling at Katsuki that it was his fault, his fault, his fault, as Katsuki just looks at Izuku's now bruised up and broken body, because he's buried, as he looks upon this water that's forming into Izuku's now broken dead body. Uh, basically, he Deku starts screaming and yelling that it was Katsuki's fault, and continues repeating the line over and over again until Katsuki gets enough and tries to use his quirk, which Deku eventually leaves before Katsuki even uses his quirk. As Mitsuki and his dad hears, uh, Mitsuki and. Her her husband hear a giant explosion in Katsuki's room as Katsuki opened his eyes and everything's back to normal. We're going to Ida because he's basically the zone. This own. So Ida is in his room thinking about what he's done as things fly off the shelves. As eventually everything comes crashing down, or what seems like it. He everything looks like it's crashing down on Ida. When it's not, Ida gets this purple smoke in his room as he's trying to f figure out logically as it grabs onto his engines. It grabs onto his, it gr just grabs onto him, pulling him down. As Ida feels like he's falling through the floor, as he's just giggling, as he hears giggling and laughing, as he doesn't know where it is, as he feels like something is grabbing at his arms. As Ida gets pulled through the floor, as he falls into 
pitch darkness as Ida just continues to scream as his he wants to scream, but his mouth is shut. Oh no.